Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I have a reaction video for you today. You can tag me in anything makeup related, preferably actually makeup related, not like a comedy sketch because I am I have a very boring sense of humor and I don't find them funny. You can tag me in all these social medias that you see it down below. I'm just gonna... Instagram, TikTok, send me them on, I don't know, tw I don't know about Twitter. I don't know what's going on. Okay, consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. Let's get into it. Let's see what I have. Just before we get into today's video, I want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, and that is Merge Restaurant. Merge Restaurant is a free-to-play Merge 2 puzzle game. It is so, so simple to play. Really, really fun. And although it's a puzzle game, it's kind of relaxing. It's not too much to take on. So in the game, you follow Mina, who is basically her dream to have like this restaurant. And she's basically fixing up pretty much. It's a dump. The restaurant's a dump. And she's making it her own. She's building it up, repairing everything. And you are there to help her along the way while also opening up other themed restaurants. This is the first ever merge game I played where you basically take like two ingredients or two things, merge them together and it becomes something else. And you find all these recipes, all these different items even like new food dishes. It's very, very simple and easy to play. And on, honestly, it is addictive. It's addictive. It's one of those games where you just want to get stuff done. The way I'm invested in a storyline to a point where I do not like this man. I don't know who he is, but he is a piece of work and he is is gonna get it at some point. Merge Restaurant as a game is gonna get your brain thinking, but not too much to a point where you're like, this is a chore. I absolutely love games like this. So you can go ahead and download Merge Restaurant and follow Mina's story using the link below or the QR code. Thank you again to Merge Restaurant for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's take a look at it again because some very good points are made. This is a question I get asked a lot, surprisingly. Ah, sorry, my throat. How can I make my face appear more masculine or more feminine? And there are a few parts, attribu attributes, that are attributed <laughs> to masculine and feminine features. Let's take a look at the masculine versus the feminine side above the brow here. A masculine brow bone is meant to be more prominent. It's meant to come out more. If your brow bone here protrudes more, it's considered more masculine. So that highlight above the brow, perfect. And then to shade it underneath to make it even more, perfect. I'm not sure about the fat eyelid though. Now you can see on the cheek on the masculine side, this is where I've been saying in my previous reaction videos, be careful. Everyone's like, look like Bella Hadid. And then you draw this line here, but I'm like, no, be careful. Cause you're gonna look like Ben Hadid. Oh wait, they have a brother. I don't know their name. Though. Because it it adds, it accentuates masculine. It gives you a masculine face shape. Masculine. So I'm gonna keep doing this, but you get it. You get it. I found it. I found the biggest beauty hack that is worth gatekeeping. I have found the thing that makes people look their best. It's this hack, and you gotta use the color wheel to do it. But it's so effective. I'm gonna show you on me. So I started doing this to my eyes. And when I tell you every time I do it and I talk to somebody, they'll be like, your eyes are mesmerizing. Your eyes are insane. Like, but my eyes are not that blue. So for reference, this is my eyes normally with like no makeup on. I have extensions, but that's it. They're blue, but not that blue. But when I do the color wheel hack, it, they just go to incredibly intense, but it's literally just what I do with my makeup. I'm going to show you. It doesn't matter what color eyes you have. Like it's just based on the color. So you take a color wheel, you find the color of your eyes. Mine are probably somewhere in like right here, these two. And then you go directly across and you're gonna be looking in this area. You're gonna find an eyeshadow that's the exact opposite color. And mine is right around here. It's in the Tarte palette. I use this reddish brown color. You're gonna take a really small brush and go in the inner corner, make like a tiny little bit of that, you know? You do not have to do a lot. I literally just do like one or two little stamps and then I'm done. I usually stamp at the tiniest little bit of eyeshadow in the waterline and on the outer corner waterline. It's very subtle, so you don't really see it, especially in the sun. And then I usually do just a tiny little bit of a wing, but like not very much and it's eyeshadow, so you kind of blend it out and it's not super noticeable. And normally I'll just like blend it out. I don't have any face makeup on right now, so it probably looks like a little much. 
but it makes your eyes look crazy intense. Okay, now you have to let me know down below. This is basic makeup knowledge, correct? Like no offense to this person because people learn something new all the time. But in my mind, this is very basic makeup knowledge. We all know that you go across the other side of the color wheel to make your eyes stand out. So I went through the, the comments of this video. Someone added me and I was like, this is makeup 101. Like you learn color theory like this in school. And it's all true. It's very, very true. So if you don't know, you're, oh, I got mascara on my eyelid. I just realized. Everyone ignore it. Your eye, just like how we use like how products cancel each other out, like um, uh, redness on the screen, green, green, redness on the skin, and then you go across to green. Same kind of what? Same kind of situation. But for example, you have blue eyes, you go across red. You have green eyes, you go across what's up? Was it green? Red. You have hazel eyes. You can use like blues and stuff like that. Now, if you have very light gray or light blue eyes, you can use the deepest shade of any color. And even like the eye color they had in that video, you can use the deepest shade of any color and your eyes are gonna look incredible. Now, if you have brown eyes like me and your color isn't on the color wheel, your eye, let me just turn this on for one second so you can see. My eyes have, they're brown, but their undertone is red. So all eye colors, even if they're brown, almost black, are gonna have an undertone of a different shade to them. So it's cause, cause they're red, I can use things like green and it, it really brings out the redness in the eye and makes them look brighter. That is a very good hack. Um, I wouldn't say it's been gatekeeped, keep, kept, gate kept by anyone because it's basic makeup knowledge, but an amazing hack. So spread the word, absolutely. Can you guess what do these cool it girls all have in common when you look at their makeup? Somehow it looks like none of them powder. If you just go back to the beginning of the video, it looks like none of them use powder. If I don't bake, my makeup will not last at all. But when you look at it up close, you could tell that I have makeup because you could see the powder. But when you look at their skin, it looks like skin. But if I don't powder, you're gonna see all my little lines and it's just not gonna last. But can you guess who learned their secret makeup hack today? Who has two thumbs? Me, I did, I'm gonna teach you. Okay, step one, I have my brows and my eyes done. Don't ask me why, because I don't wanna apply anything. First thing I'm gonna do is take a strobe cream. Um, this is MAC Pink Light, but you could take L'Oreal Lumi, same thing, much cheaper. Remember when I applied white paint on my face and I said it peeks through? Well, apparently this is exactly what that does. So we're gonna apply this only on our cheeks and on our middle of our nose. Look at Sophia Richie, look at that. Please tell me this is getting picked up on my iPhone. Look at that white reflex, no white paint needed. Next, where do you bake? I bake my under eyes, my laugh lines, and sometimes here, but that's mostly for brightness. So I'm gonna take a mattifying primer. This is my first time using a mattifying primer. I've always heard you need something moisturizing for your under eyes, so I don't know how this is gonna work. This uh, mattifying primer is Yves Saint Laurent New. You could use whatever mattifying primer you have. This is the one that I had, and I'm gonna use it around my nose too, because I always bake around here. I don't need on anything on my forehead, so around there. Now I'm gonna go do a full face of makeup with no powder and I'm gonna be right back. This is Hailey Bieber, I swear I look more glowier. What the hell does, look at this, look. Okay, hold on, let me stand still. Wait, the, no beauty filter, beauty filter. This is no, this is, this is, look at my skin. Okay, but wait, only places that I have powder is my inner corner, my nose, and one little line here, that's the Rare Beauty Highlighter. Um, my foundation is L'Oreal True Match. My concealer was NARS. Let's give it a test wear. I'm gonna be back in like three hours. Let's see if the makeup stays the same with this hack. Two hours later and I look, we crack the color. I have to give credit to the makeup artist who taught me this hack. Her name is Jody. Wow. Look at it. No filter. Filter? No filter. Wow. Okay, her makeup looks really, really beautiful here. Bear in mind, let's talk about these images just very quickly. A lot of these images is very, very simple to retouch and not have it look retouched. But also as well, rem okay, remember something, okay? The, the makeup we see online and how it's done online by just anyone on TikTok, most of the time is absolutely not how they're doing makeup on celebrities. We are not doing our makeup the same as celebrities celebrity makeup artists do celebrities makeup for a photo shoot, for runway, for something like that. The makeup artist has to consider how the powder is going to look under particular lighting, how the flash is going to look with this powder, how the highlight is going to look with certain lights. A lot of the time you might find yourself on set with, with a model 
you see the the picture of a, of a of a model come up, and you're like, oh shit! I thought I did a lot more highlight than that. I thought I did more bronzer than that. I thought they were matter than that. And then you have to go in and touch up very slightly because that camera is going to pick up a load of stuff. And trust me, if they have to do a lot of post production on your makeup work, you're not getting much more work. <laughs> the internet's way of doing makeup is not the way that you see a lot of people do it online. Let's be real. The way I do my makeup here online isn't how I would do it on a bride or how I would, there's, uh, techniques change depending on certain situations. However, that was a good video. Illuminating your makeup from underneath is a beautiful way to do it. And the way that she was doing the massifying in the areas where they needed it. This is the trick, right? You only massify where you need it. A lot of the time, these people are gonna have people to touch up from gradually throughout the day. So she was mentioning that baking works for her, it works for her, she says she needs to do it, great. Because you don't have somebody following you around every 15 minutes to touch up, every few minutes to touch up. That's why a lot of people don't need a lot of powder, they don't need to bake a lot. I personally, as an oily person, don't use a lot of powder because I like to look, you look shiny. And then later on, I just tap a little bit more powder in the places that need to be tapped in. Powder where it's needed, when it's needed, is the trick to having a natural looking skin, but matte where you need to be matte. Look, can I live? Can I live? Can I fucking live? Such a common issue. Eye primer. Dry it down. Dry it with a tissue. Tap, tap, tap. Eye primer on your fingers getting nice and warm and, and um, I was about to say milky, but you don't want it to be texture of milk. And then tap it on. <coughs> Fixed. Okay, here's, here's why I wouldn't, right? Two reasons. Have I reacted to this before? The first one? I think I did. But two reasons. First one, black, even black pencils have an undertone to them, okay? I'm gonna show you. Okay, so this black pencil, I'm gonna smudge it out. Can you see how it's slightly green? I don't know if it's showing up on camera. It's slightly green, right? And that's a black pencil. This is how it looks when it's not smudged out. It has this almost greeny undertone to it when it's smudged out. This is another black pencil, and this is more truer black. Black black pencils aren't always pure black, so do be careful what you're mixing it in with. But also, the phrasing of that. Applying black liner under contour to imitate natural shadows. If you're using a product that's a contour product that doesn't imitate natural shadows, you're not using a contour product. <laughs> you're using a bronzer. So they're basically saying mix a black with a bronzer to make it more like a contour, which is fact, that's fine. I would prefer a darker gray to black again, because black still has an undertone in some products but you're using bronzer. Your contour should be, your contour product, if it is a good contour products should be imitating natural undertone. So just be careful, also as well, in that one and the one before, you can kind of still see a little bit of this this weird kind of shade and tone. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Listen, <laughs> the theory is there. It's there. That is the direction if you, to lift your eyeliner in. If you want to, to lift the whole face, do bear in mind where your eyebrows are, but it's there. I mean, you can literally just, just... <laughs> And you can literally hold the, hold the string, paint the string and then hold it and tap it down if you wanted to. Give your nose a bit of a rest, but I can't fault it. I can't say whether it hurts or not because I don't have one of those piercings. Just me again. Thank you to the sponsor of today's video. Once more, Merge Restaurant. Don't forget to use the link down below or the QR code to download the game for yourself. You see anything that you think is a little bit uh, on um, social media regarding makeup, let me know down below. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Consider subscribing, giving this video a thumbs up. You can watch a whole reaction playlist 
over here somewhere and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.